The science part of farming is in some ways the most interesting bit. As a Yorkshireman and a farmer, I really don't like spending money. If you're understanding the, the physiology of how a plant grows, you know, grass plants especially, then that's not costing you money, it's a case of being organised. You don't have to do anything revolutionary. Sunlight and rain's free, isn't it? And all we're doing is turning solar power in, into something we can eat. But well, do I not need to do it? Do it again, because I'm not sure I got it in. Slightly flippantly said to a group that walked around with me, they said, what's, what's your farming method? I said, well, basically I open and close gates. That's what I do. You're mimicking ruminants moving. But I'm using hedges and dry stone walls and gates. But I measure where they're going to next. And, you know, so I'm always, I measure grass. The field that's being grazed, if it's left to rest, as it were, we know nothing grazing on it for ages, it recovers more quickly. They've got something to work with, they've got the basic scaffolding to regrow again. Because you haven't eaten it right down to the point where it's to start taking energy and resources out of its roots to regrow the leaves. If you leave some leaves behind, it can start photosynthesizing the minute the cows walk out. People talk about sources and emissions instead of cycles. The basic fundamental bit that the carbon that comes out of you and me or a cows come from there. If it's come from there first and all you've done is use the carbon to capture solar energy and feed plants and animals and people and then it goes back again, it's a circular economy, isn't it? As soon as we dig it out of the ground and burn it, it's, all, it's, it's just adding, it's not doing anything else but adding. Uh, look at Speedwell. Uh, and, it, and this year we've not used any nitrogen for the first year for, I can't remember, just because it's just ridiculously expensive. It was somewhere I, I hoped to get to one day, but we sort of painted into it this year just because of the price of it. That's had no nitrogen on it for two or three years, so it's getting more floristically diverse now. One of the interesting things we did when we did the carbon audit was, was the measured carbon in soil. The best one had, had just shy of 15% carbon in top layer of soil. Did feel like I'd got an extra blue pea to badge when my, my carbon content was so high. It's been in continuous grass for possibly hundreds of years. They are cute. <laughs> Who could not like cows? Eh? How could you not like cows? They're just like headless chickens when you first let them out. Because these have never been out in their lives, you see. It's like Freedom Day, do you know what I mean? I get why for not all like sheep, because I can get exasperated with them sometimes, but, you know. And they're not smelly, are they? Folks do have cows, aren't they smelly? Not, not now, are they? And they're still fascinating after however long I've been doing this and all. They're not dangerous, they're just crackers. If you're a Yorkshireman and you're a farmer and somebody who doesn't own one end of a cow from another starts telling you what to do, it goes down like a bucket of coal sick. If I measure stuff and that helps me spend less money, that, from my perspective, that's a good thing. But that doesn't mean I'm uninterested in all the, what we would call the bunny hugger stuff. Even the most soulless amongst farmers still like to see wildlife. You've seen me walk around. I find a great joy in looking at them insects that have peered on the backside. Look, there's an awesome move in there. Look at all these. There's look at millions and, well, millions of exaggerated, but all insect life. What's that? I don't know what that is. There's clearly curlews up there that are there every day. Up on that top, I think there's a lapwing nesting. I couldn't tell you where, but there's always one floating about. If it's simple and, and it can be applied in practice, without great expense. Most people say, well, I'll do that. You know, you don't need to be told to do it. There's multiple benefits for my livestock as well as for the environment, in inverted commas. I have got an inordinately large amount of pleasure how to be able to do both things at once. To, to tick boxes for, for what we would, farmers would call the bunny huggers, but I'm helping myself as a farmer as well. It's not, it's not pure altruism at all. I've heard, a friend who farms on the other side of the river. There was two people we were talking to one day from Natural England Environment Agency who said to us, why do you lads do it? Just, why, you know, the hours, the, the weather, the, the precariousness of the economics of it and all the rest of it. 
this lad just said, because it's a disease. And I think that's the best description I've ever heard of farming. Because it's a disease, it's a chronic, possibly terminal disease that you can't shake off. Two paracetamol won't fix it. It's like an itch you constantly have to scratch and it's... Um... Yeah, I can't stop it. Don't want to stop it. <laughs>